ตาแนน I've been using the Easy p r e s s l CP6 for a couple of weeks now, and I did some upgrades. Okay, um, I did put a rubber footing, like a rubber. I don't know how. Like at the base of the, at the base of the catch cup, I've ordered it online, and it fits perfectly on the catch cup of the ZP6. Also, I've I've put a, like a rubber sleeve with Easy Presso logo on it. <laughs> This rubber sleeve came from the Easy Presso Q Air. So today uh, we're gonna clean the Easy Presso ZP6. I don't know how to do it also, but we're gonna learn today how to clean it. So if you have a ZP6 at home that you haven't cleaned for a while, maybe you can um, join me clean it step by step. So um, first, of course, we need to remove the crank handle. Wait, let me just get a... Uh, let's remove the catch cup. Now we're gonna remove the burr. So in order for you to do this, um, you need to set your grinder at a coarser setting so that you can press the burr upwards. So press here. Press here. And then you loosen the, I'm not sure what they call this, but it is, this knot is what you use to um, calibrate your ZP6 to have a perfect zero. There. Next, um, oh, this thing comes off um, loosely, so be careful with that. Okay, and next I think we need to remove the... Okay, this one. Oh, nice. This is the, this is the actual burr set. it's simply pressed fit onto this but it's nice that you can remove this part so you can clean it no huh? because other grinders won't let you remove this part because of the alignment but as we know the ZP6 has a very um, very easy uh, calibration tool attached within the grinder so yeah Next is this part. I'm thinking... Oh! Okay, both of the... Both of these parts, the adjustment ring and the actual burr is um, reverse threaded. So if you want to loosen it, you need to go clockwise. And if you want to tighten it, you need to go counterclockwise. Okay, I think that's it. Um, can we still remove this part? I don't know. Okay, I think this part is... I think we can't remove this part. All right. We're gonna get some brush and a blower and a blower. Okay, so I think we need a bigger um, bigger towel for this because we're gonna be blowing coffee particles away. Right. So. I think I'm, I'm most excited to clean this part. Okay, it's, it's one piece as well. Oh, 
de ba? Look at the convenience of doing that. And then having the ability to do this. Wow. You can actually really clean it thoroughly. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Right. Um, the catch cup you can always clean. Every, actually, every after, every after your grind, every after grinding something, you can actually clean it. Okay, I think the best course to deal with the. Uh, with the adjustment ring dial is to because there is a part here that opens up yeah there is a part there that opens up so you want to clean that as well right so i think the best um the best way to do this is to turn your dial ring to the coarsest setting so it opens up fully. And then just take a normal regular toothbrush. Then brush along the insides. Yeah, maybe you can also blow. Use a blower to clean it. Okay, the bearing is also loosely attached to the device, so be careful with that. I just dropped mine. By the way, the ZP6 from Barista Essentials PH has a different color. It's like um, it's like a very light rose gold instead of just plain silver. Again, it's a it's a ZP6 special, so yeah, it's a different color. Again, when you're cleaning the chamber or the insides of your grinder, be careful not to not to scratch it, especially if you're using a brush like this, like a regular paint brush. Yeah, because it has metal components and metal scratches metal. So, just be careful. You don't want to damage your grinder. Now, why do you want to take your grinder apart from time to time and clean it? Um, you see this, um, you see, if you can see these retentions. Okay, the coffee grounds that get stuck inside your grinder, those are called retentions. So these, ret these retentions over time, they accumulate and some of them will find its way out of the grinder at some point and then they will end up in your cup so if you haven't cleaned your grinder for a very long time and your coffee tastes weird even if you're using a new um, even if you're you're brewing a new set of coffee beans or or you're brewing like some expensive coffee beans and it tastes weird it might be because of the retention yeah and and <clears throat> and if you've seen my latest video about the ZP6 where I compared different particle distributions of different grinders um, the ZP6 has an ample amount of retention every grind. Okay. It's a very um, it's a very complicated piece of engineering. So it has a lot of nooks and crannies that that may be the cause of retention. Okay, now we're gonna put it back together. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start with the burr 
So I've put the spring first and then the washer. The washer, make sure that the protruded part here, make sure that the protruded part is facing up. It's facing the bearing. You see, um, if you are if you're familiar with how machineries work, the bearings should not touch anything. Um, the bearings should always be isolated. The bearings works best when they are isolated. So the, the reason for this protrusion here yeah, is to isolate the bearing, right? It touches this part of the bearing yeah, to isolate it to work um, at its best, right? So make sure that the protruded part is always facing the bearing, right? So you put it back like that. Okay, now we have the axle and the burr ready. We're gonna put back the dial, the adjust the the adjustment dial. Again, it is reverse threaded. So to put it back in, you need to go counterclockwise. And you you want to you want to be careful doing this because the thread under and the thread on top is very different. So you don't want to damage your grinder, right? Okay, make sure that's tight, but not too tight. Right, and then we're gonna put the outer burr. Again, it's reverse threaded, be careful. Especially the, the thread for the outer burr is a bit finer than than the other side so you you might want to align it first before trying to turn because you don't want to misthread this part because you're you're gonna damage it right and to tighten this part because it doesn't have any grip um, I'm gonna use a rubber here to hold it and then tighten we're gonna do the same here okay Now we have those in place. Um, let's put back the inner burr. Okay. Then put back the bearing. You might want to clean the bearing also. Because it has some um, coffee deposits in them there now for this part you want to um, you want to take note of the this part so it's rounded right but it has a flat um, but it's flat on one side that is to stop it from turning also so you want to you want to put that flat side onto the flat side of the axle. And you want to you want to and you also want to put the dotted side. So these these little divots um, they are the calibration divots for the for the burr, for the axle. Okay, you want to, you want to find that flat part first, and then 
then put it here. Okay. Now that you have that, oh, while I'm doing this, I am pressing the burr up so that I can expose the thread. Right. Now while you're pressing the burr up against the spring, you, you want to put the calibration um, nut and then try it again. Okay, now obviously it's not calibrated because we have the red dot way beyond zero. So you want to um, loosen again the setting and then tighten the, tighten the calibration ring. Okay, you want to try that again? It's still over. Okay, it's still over. Okay, we are two clicks away. So you want to you want to adjust um, at this point when you are two clicks away from zero um, you want you're gonna want to adjust the calibration ring one by one now it also ha it also has its clicks okay so press lightly under so press your burr lightly under and then let the calibration ring click And then we're gonna check. Okay, now we are at exactly zero. Um, if you look at the website of Easy Presso, they advise that uh, zero is the first click that zero is the first click that the grinder um, moves, right? So beyond zero, that's negative one. Negative one should be the setting at which the grinder is not moving. But in my case, I want to calibrate it like the Comandante where zero is the part, um, where zero is the setting that from which the grinder is not moving. And then the first click is when the grinder is the first setting that it moves. So if you want to do it like a Comandante as well, you should place the farthest to zero. Uh, but if you want to follow the if you want to follow the easy presso calibration, you can do it as well because we can all do different calibrations for our grinders. All right, I'm not saying you should follow my methods, but you can do this. All right. So right now I am at exactly zero. The red dot is exactly at zero, and I am happy with that calibration. So from this, from. So, Okay, let me check one, one. Yeah, that moves. Yeah, all right, so that's it. Um, that is how you clean your Easy Presso ZP6. Um, also, a bit of the calibration, how to calibrate your um, Easy Presso ZP6 after cleaning it and taking it apart and putting it back again. Um, yeah. I hope this video helps. I hope you enjoyed this video. For now, thank you so much for watching. In the next videos, I'm gonna show you more about coffee. Bye!